I'm Eric Stark. I'm joined by our tennis, uh, we'll call you guru here at the Lancaster Newspapers, Earl Cornelius. We're going to be talking about the Cozer Jewelers Pro Circuit Tennis Challenge at the Hemfield Sports Complex. Starts up, what, May, Sunday, May 12th. That's great. And yes. sort of goes all week long then. Uh, it's fun tennis. It's the sixth year of this, right, Earl? Yes, it is. Um, what kind of level are we talking here? Is this the, sort of the minor leagues of the, of the, what the big stuff we see on TV yeah, all the is, time? This is the minor leagues of uh, tennis. Uh, this is a $10,000 tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, the USTA Pro Circuit goes from $10,000 tournaments to $100,000 tournaments. Uh, there are 43 women's events that they hold throughout the year, starting in January, going till December. Um, a number of the players who come through this, um, especially with the $10,000 events, these are younger players who are building ranking points to get into the $25,000 and $50,000 events and eventually work their way up to the Grand Slams. Okay, so what level, if we're going to equate this to baseball, what level of the minor leagues would this be? This would be probably your class single A okay. at this point. However, you've got some people who've, who've already been in national tournaments and, and uh, the Grand Slams. For example, two years ago, Laura, or I'm sorry, the second year of the tournament, Laura Granville um, came back here. She had already been a two-time NCAA champion. She had already reached the fourth round at Wimbledon, mm -hmm. um, third round at the French and at the U.S. Open. She came back because she was trying to retool her game after some injuries. Turns out this was the last tournament she won because shortly thereafter her injuries recurred. She ended up retiring, gotcha. and she's now the coach at Princeton. Now, so this, the, we're going to see players that are on the rise, maybe some that are just, this is the level they are. But the ones that are on the rise, we have, is there any notable U.S. players uh, that uh, would stand out? Sure. Well, this, this year, the six, it looks like the 60 will probably be a uh, girl in Brooke Ops, Austin. Mm -hmm. Brooke Austin is from Indianapolis. And uh, when she came here two years ago, she was then ranked as the top-ranked junior female in the country. Interesting. Um, and she reached the, the quarterfinals that year. Um, over the years, I mean, the first, the first tournament uh, that they held here uh, in 2008, Christy Ahn, who was uh, from New Jersey, was a 15-year-old at the time. She won the tournament. She's now an All-American at Stanford. Wow. Uh, the second year was Laura Granville, as I mentioned. The mm -hmm. third year, it was... Um, it was Alexandra Mueller who has twice right won the national uh, playoffs to get into the U.S. Open. The fourth year was Robin Anderson, who's now the third-ranked player in the country in Division I, playing for UCLA. And uh, last year was Pia Suomalainen, who is from Finland, and she's Finland's top player. You still didn't mention the name. I was trying to set you up here, Earl. Okay. Sloane Stevens, right? Sloane Stevens, women's. she was here in the very first one. She's now the second-ranked American player. Uh, behind Serena Williams. She's ranked 17th in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the other players who were here, um, Rebecca Marino lost in the original, uh, in the inaugural tournament. She ended up being 38th in the world um, and reaching several finals uh, before she ended up uh, you know, retiring this past year. So what we're saying is this is a quality tournament with some, mm -hmm. some players you could see on the rise. Right. Stevens was supposed to be here this year, correct? And something well, happened. Well, that was Alexandra Stevenson. Okay. Alexandra Stevenson, who is... Which is Dr. Um, J's... Daughter. Daughter. Yes. That was and the, she was she was one of the ones who originally one signed up. Sure right. She was one of the ones who was originally signed up for this, uh, but she pulled out. She's playing in a tournament in Raleigh, North Carolina, this week, which is a fifty thousand tournament. A, a little bit of a next level, probably the double A if it's a single. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a fun tournament. How, how do fans get to go to this? If you want to see tennis, this is a free event. It goes um, start the qualifying starts on Sunday, uh, May twelfth. There's a field of sixty four in the qualifying. They qualify for eight slots, okay. so they get the entire way down to the quarterfinals of the qualifying, and then there's a 32 main draw. Uh, there's also a 16 draw for um, for the doubles. Uh, the winners of this um, go on and they get $1,500 or just under $1,600 to win this, but they get ranking points to move their way up. As I said, it's a free event. Um, the finals are on Sunday, May 19th. They start at noon. The semifinals, it's actually, they call it Super Saturday because the semifinals start at 10 a.m. on Saturday. They generally have two singles sandwiched around the doubles match. Interesting. And this is like the old-time tennis where people actually stay in people's homes, too, when they're mm -hmm. visiting here yeah, as one well. Of the, one of the really interesting things here is, is that this, is, this has gotten a good reputation on the tour um, because a number of the players will stay with families' homes. They've, they've built up friendships. Um, and it's also close to New York. So last year, Brian Early, who was the U.S. Open director, he came down to watch some of the tennis Several years ago, Judy Levering, who was the first female president mm -hmm. of the USTA, was here. Um, and they've come to watch this. They sort of gauge the, the quality of players. They're still actively, Judy's still actively involved in, in the game itself, as is Brian. Very good. So for some good tennis, check out the sports complex at Hemfield.